Being a leader is no easy task. There's a lot to manage and so much work to be done. Not to mention being the head of different persons with varying personalities. When leading a team, one could be the main mechanic in creating a well-oiled machine, or could be the sole contributor to the downfall of multiple persons in a company. This book teaches us how to become a leader that facilitates growth in one team, ensures that each member isn't feeling burnt out or unheard, and creates more potential leaders in the process. Here are the top seven lessons from the book Multipliers by Liz Wiseman. Lesson one, know the difference. The book starts off by differentiating effective leaders from the ineffective ones. As the namesake of the book, a good leader is referred to as a multiplier, while a bad leader is a shrinker. Let's first discuss bad leaders. Shrinkers are leaders who make an effort to concentrate on their own abilities and intelligence, so much so that members of their team start to feel belittled, useless, and powerless. They get this type of title because they shrink the impact of their teammates and minimize the output of their team. On the other hand, multipliers are leaders who use their platform to push their members to do better and to showcase their talents. In doing this, they effectively boost the efficiency and success of the team they are leading. Lesson 2. Be a Talent Magnet Multipliers can come from anywhere. They can be from Ivy League schools or they could be college undergraduates. What's important is that multipliers also recognize that talent can come in different shapes, forms, and sizes. A good leader can understand their members' personalities and effectively bring out the talent they see in them. A multiplier can harness the talents around them through determining the abilities of those surrounding them. After that, they then pick the perfect job and role for specific persons. And lastly, when someone in their team believes that they have reached their limits, a multiplier will acknowledge their feelings, but continue to put them in roles that will continuously help the member grow and realize their own greater capacities. One thing about being a talent magnet is knowing how to bring the talent out of people. Lesson three, don't be a tyrant. No one wants to be part of the team where they feel suffocated and bound by their leaders. A nervous and uptight environment where a leader washes their hands of blame through pointing fingers at members of their team isn't exactly the most nurturing and welcoming place to be in. Rarely do we see anyone feeling happy about working under a boss who claims all the limelight and shoves all the mistakes towards the lower ranking employees. Instead, one must act as a savior. To do this, leaders must choose to take the back seat and let their team members steer the wheel. Instead of commenting again and again on how one's team should tackle a problem, let them decide and come up with a plan. Another way one can act more like a savior is to push the team to work without thinking about failure. Also, good leaders own up to their mistakes and give credit where it is due. Lesson 4. Challenge the team. Once a team becomes complacent, a multiplier will always help them pick up the pace and envision a new challenge. Multipliers don't just accept what their team members feel. They don't infantilize their teams. Instead, they see members of their team as fully realized and talented adults who can face any challenge thrown at them. Many employees start acting like robots because they aren't urged to think by their leaders. They're just told what to do and how to do things. However, for a multiplier, when their team is faced with new challenges and obstacles, they would rather let their team handle it first. Telling people how to solve a problem usually hinders the solution-making process and shows employees that they don't need to think that much. In these types of situations, a good leader and a multiplier will always make their readiness to assist known and will keep on pushing their team members to reach the targets and overcome the challenges. Lesson 5. Welcome Discussions Most leaders believe that they are good at what they do because they can make instant decisions and implement them. Although the specific skill may come in handy from time to time, this type of decision-making skill has no place in being a multiplier. This type of leadership isn't healthy due to the fact that when problems are suddenly brought up, a team's leader suddenly makes instant decisions while neglecting the views of different team members. Instead, a multiplier would prepare an agenda and bring the issues up to the team for careful discussion and consideration. During the meeting, a multiplier would facilitate an open and welcoming atmosphere, so all members would feel comfortable enough to lay down their opinions, views, and suggestions. Another important thing to remember about being a good leader is to not show biases and to keep the discussion going until a sound and apt solution is found. Lesson 6. Trust the team. We usually see coaches shouting their tips and strategies at team members while they're at the sidelines. Rarely or almost never do we see them come into the playing field, hold the ball, and then show their team what to do during the game. In becoming a multiplier, one must make sure that they have full trust in their team. This means that they know their team will perform and that they can sit back and relax. But before a multiplier can do this, they must first train their team like any coach would with a championship team. Good leaders must first teach the accountabilities, responsibilities, and duties of their team before expecting their teams to perform and exceed their expectations. Once we've shown what's expected of them, one should also show the consequences of not meeting the minimum requirements. After having done these, a multiplier will then choose to trust the talents they've found 
and see to it that they succeed in their jobs. Lesson 7. Stay Aware One may be striving to become a multiplier, but it's always possible for us to become accidental shrinkers. Something that may sound positive to us may actually be off-putting to someone else. For example, the author noted that she always asked a coworker how or why certain jobs can be so tough. Although meaning well, the coworker was starting to feel as though her struggles were being undermined by the author's constant optimism. Thus, what's needed is for us to always understand our team members and initiate communication. One can't always be a perfect multiplier, just as how one can't expect their team members to be impeccable all the time. In conclusion, this book teaches us how to become good and effective leaders. It shows us that to become a leader, a person should multiply what's given to them and should also push the people around them to reach their full potential. Leading a team is not a task for the faint of heart, but by abiding by the tips given in the book, one can become more aware and help themselves become better leaders and team members. What kind of leader do you want to be? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.